Oh, but brothers and sisters, it's time now that we fall in love with ourselves and with each other. This world has robbed us of a true guide, but it's time, it's time to unite and fight, fight hard for unity. Brothers and sisters, we must live for each other. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and we give him thanks for his mercy and his goodness to all of the members of the human family. We thank God and I greet each of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. To the mother, to the sister, to the son, to the family of our brother, Stan Tukey Williams, to the Reverend Dr. Lewis E. Logan, to Minister Tony Muhammad, to Sister Barbara Becknell, and to all of those who had a part in this beautiful program concerning the victory of life of Stanley Tukey Williams. Eulogies in the Muslim tradition, we don't bother to give them because we're all here because we were touched by this man. But I feel greatly honored that Sister Barbara Becknell would ask me to give the eulogy for this mighty warrior for God, for peace, and for our people, and for humanity. Peace comes by submission to the will of God. This is the irrevocable will of God. Everyone that is born on this earth must at some time taste of death. The only way to escape this result is to never have been born. But since we were given the gift of life, at some point in time, we will ultimately taste of death. One of the attributes of God is that He is the life giver. Nobody gives life but that one supreme source of life. What we do with the life that he gives tells us who we are and whose we are. We have the power and the potential to become perfect reflections of him who gave us life but we also have the potential to degenerate into subhuman creatures that defile the gift of life and become dead spiritually and purveyors of death I want to say to my dear brother Stan's mother. Grieve not, my dear, dear sister, because your womb produced a man that death cannot touch. Yeah. Jesus said, fear not 
the man who can kill the body, but fear him who can kill both the body and the soul. They took the physical body of our brother, but his unconquerable soul is alive and well. And that is why we cannot break down in grief. We must celebrate the strength of a good life that God sent this way to teach us all some valuable lessons. I uh, have tried to serve God all my life. But for the last 50 years of my life, a little over that, I've been trying to help the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to raise black men and women from a state of mental death and ignorance to transform our lives. I. I prayed that God would let Stan Tukey Williams live. So did Barbara. So did everyone sitting here. So did mom. So did son. So did daughter. We all prayed and asked God to spare his life. Well, we may wonder, why God, did you not answer our prayers? And to those of us who, at this moment in time, feel that sense of abandonment, because it appears that your prayer was not answered, there's a verse in the Holy Quran that says, I give life, God speaking, and I am the ultimate cause of death. And he says, no soul dies, but by my permission. So since he permitted this womb to give life to him, he has every right to call that life in when that life has run its course even though we would want him to be here longer the god said you must come in now and as i saw the tears of the family as i listened to my brother here give us the chronological commentary of the last hours of my brother and our brother's life. As I saw the tears and heard the cries of the women of the family and tears in your eyes and tears in my eyes, I knew, I knew that a wise God had called him in. And mother, and all of you who were with him, and I say blessed to be with him in those final hours, you saw something that you might not have understood exactly what you were looking at. You saw a man at peace with God and at peace with himself. And you have no way, listen to me good, mama. You have no way of knowing how God was communicating to his servant in those final hours where that servant could forgive and say thank you to everybody who did something to help him. You couldn't see the angels who were there to escort him back to his sender because his work 
on earth had been accomplished. Now what was that work? I'm here in this wonderful church that we preach Christ as the Redeemer. Well, if you put something in the pawn shop, you have the ticket. Right. But at some point, if you want to redeem, yeah. you have to pay a price for redemption. Yeah. You see, you talk Jesus, but sometimes you are blind to see a man who walked Jesus. Yeah. So when I talk to you, I want to lift all discomfort from your hearts because this is a great man. who experienced hell Come on. Yeah. and only one who went to the depth of hell is qualified to ascend to the heights of heaven and this is why Jesus had to descend into hell before he could ascend into heaven Dan Tookie Williams was 17 years of age and he founded the Crips well the enemy co-founder thank you the enemy is always watching for leadership that will arise among black people because the government of the United States has a denial objective yeah. and that is that black people should never organize effectively because it is only by organizing effectively that you can change the reality under which we live. So they saw in Stan Tookie Williams, a potential threat. Strong, muscular, fearless, a warrior. He told me when I was blessed to meet him, and I didn't meet him except through Sister Barbara and Dwayne Moody, they came to my hotel room and played me a tape. And I heard his voice. And tears welled up in my eyes because I knew what I was listening to. You. See, when you are directed by the Spirit of God, you know those who are directed by that same Spirit. So I then had to go to San Quentin to see my brother. Yes. Come on. I've been looking at black men for 50 years Come on. playing games. Yes. I should not by now know one who ain't playing no game. Stan was as sincere and committed and a redeemed soul. Now to mama, to son, to sister, to family, look, look, look. There's preachers up on this roster. And I don't care how well we preach. You can't make your son what you are. You may feel the anointing of the Spirit of God and you may sit down with your Bible and teach your children. Yeah. But unless God steps in the picture and touches that boy, 
and touches that girl, you will not see a transformation in that life. How could a man be sentenced to death in a hellhole like San Quentin? In solitary confinement for years. Why did you put him there, God? I wanted him to discover me. And I wanted him to discover the real self yeah. of Stan Tukey Williams. Yes, sir. So without preacher intervention, Come on. you didn't hear me. No. Without preacher intervention, right. without family intervention, right. without friend intervention, Come on. God stepped in yeah. and touched this man. Yeah. And a transformation began to take place in the man you knew Come on. as the co-founder of the Crips. But he became Stan, Come on. the man, the resurrected man. Stan, the man. Stan, the redeemed man. Stan, the man, a man that would lead his people in a better way. Why, why did you take him, God? As my brother, my dear, dear brother was so blessed and I feel so special to listen to you recount the hours. I was so moved because I was watching Stan as I listened to this friend of his discuss the final hours. And I said to myself, he will be greater in death than he ever was in life. And so family, dear family, look, I want to bring you for this the last few minutes of my so-called eulogy. I want to bring you to Jesus personally because he was an innocent man. But he was an innocent man with a word in his mouth that threatened the political powers and the religious powers of his day. Stan didn't claim religion That's right. because he saw the divisiveness right. in religion. He saw the hypocrisy in religion. He saw the hatred produced by people who claim the love of God. How can you claim to love God and be a Christian or be a Muslim or be a Jew and then you are killing and hating and destroying one another when all the prophets came from the same God. Yeah. All recognized the same Father. Stan Tookie Williams outgrew religion. Yeah. Ooh, hey, that. Man. Now, excuse me if I, I don't mean to step on any toes, but All right. he outgrew religion that restricts, confines, narrows the focus, and he wanted to take on the wings of an eagle and fly high so he could see broader, wider, deeper. And when Snoop met him, Snoop met a profound mind right. in a physical body. Yeah. He touched my brother. That was a magnificent poem, Snoop. And you know, Snoop, yeah. 
you a magnificent man. And I tell you something, brother. See the mantle. You know when e Elisha uh, was with Elijah. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Elisha said to Elijah, you know, if I can see you ascend, would you give me a double portion of your spirit? And he was there. And he saw his master ascend. And what he asked for, he got. I heard a different snoop today. I heard a snoop that in the name of Tookie Williams will help and we will help you create the movement in his noble name. That man was touched by a supreme power. And any of us that were ever in his presence, we knew that whether we were Christian or Muslim or Jewish or black or white or Hispanic or of no particular religious persuasion, we knew when we met him, we met a man profoundly moved by higher principles. So, Jesus, when he angered the authorities, they said, we got to get him. How can we get him? Well, we got to have some false witnesses. Right. Why would you snitch on your brother to lighten your sentence for what you did. Why would you let them use you like that? It is because you have no love for yourself, no love for your people. So you can be used like that. There were some people around Jesus like that. They were false witnesses. Naturally, when the Sanhedrin saw that Jesus was doing things on the Sabbath that didn't seem quite right to them, they used the law to trap Jesus. And Jesus, being wise, he said, well, I didn't come to change the law. I came to fulfill it. But he was letting the Sanhedrin of that day know that a fulfiller don't look like the man that's preaching it. A fulfiller lives it and then closes the book on it. Come on. Well, they brought him before a governor. They kind of knew that he was innocent. But it was a political thing. So he washed his hands of the matter. And allowed him, an innocent man, to be crucified. Barbara Becknell and your sister in arms. Two women who were there watching brother. See, there was two women around Jesus along with his mother. And there was a faithful disciple named John. He, He was there too. All the rest of them had run away. (laughs) 
So then they, they hung him up. They hung him up. But look, he beheld his mother. Woman, behold your son. Mary and Martha, they were there. And he went through excruciating torture. Not for 35 minutes, but for many, many hours. And then he looked with compassion on his tormentors. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Stan Tukey Williams said, I forgive the political governor who didn't have the courage washed his hands of the matter. But his, his early anger switched immediately to compassion. I forgive him. The violence must stop. And there he laid on that gurney in the form of a cross. Resolved like the master, knowing that death would never touch him. He strained to sit up, to lift his head up, to look at his friend. Smile. Wanted to let you all know it's all right. Now let me close this. The master was so magnificent when he knew that was his fate. So he gathered his disciples. And he said, let not your hearts be troubled over these things, mama, sister, son. I have a destiny. Where I go, you cannot come right now because you got work to do while I'm gone. Now, Jesus was so wise, and so was Brother Stan. And I don't want the media to say, what sacrilege. Come on. Farrakhan. Compared this killer's life with Jesus. But every true revolutionary, every man that will not bow down to the forces of this world, will be rebuked and scorned and evil spoken of. This is the best place to hold his home going for more than most in here. He didn't talk him, he lived him. Now, before he passed, Jesus had a, a supper. And he knew he had a betrayer sitting at table and uh, he said uh, this is my bread this is uh, my body take and eat this in remembrance of me and likewise after supper he took the cup and he poured it he said this is my blood that I shed for the New Testament. 
and for the remission of sins. Drink this as oft as you can in remembrance of me. What did you know, Jesus, when you were doing that? He said, feed on me in your heart. And lo, he said, I will be with you to the end of the world. Where's Stan? That's not Stan. That's the house that he lived in. He's not there. That's what we call the remains. But the essence, that's not there. All you can do is apply this to the earth, or as I understand his will was to cremate that body and turn it into dust and sprinkle it over a water body near in South Africa somewhere. Well, but he's more alive now than he was when you last saw him. Why is he more alive now? See, sometimes when somebody's walking with you, you don't see them as clearly as you should, as clearly as you could. Because sometimes our humanity is a veil for our divinity. I might cuss one time. I might do something strange. And somebody see me and say, see, I told you he wasn't no good. But when you are gone, the things that remain are the things that you do for God and his Christ. That's why you can never bury or cremate, stand. Come on. Now, feed on me. See, every school, we should have a movement Come on. that puts Stan's books in every school throughout America. Listen. Yeah. The peace protocol yeah should be everywhere there's gang conflict. Right. See, and if you feed Come on. on his words, see, as they were reading his words, that's how you communicate with him. Right. Now you go back and read his words tomorrow, and I guarantee you'll see something tomorrow that you didn't see today. Right. Now try it and see if I'm lying. And then think about his life. Right. That's the wine. It ain't just his words. Because he was an example of the word that he gave. So if we eat his words, like the scripture says, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. If you feed on the words of Brother Stan, he will come closer to you and you will not only see his redemption clearly, you become a part of his redemption. Now all of you who are his pallbearers, you were his buddies out here. But he became a new man in there. All the young men and women that are listening outside, see, he paid a price, not just for his redemption, but for ours. Now look at this, and I'm finished. Look, 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 brothers and sisters. He paid 
a price and the price was his life he's greater than Galileo because Galileo told the church that oh no no the earth is not the center of the universe it's the Sun well when you challenge the church you, you got a problem and when they were about to kill him he recanted so his death couldn't give life to the truth that he had discovered because he was unwilling to die but what he believed not stand see it was his innocence he said to me when I visited him he said minister I did a lot of wrong things I did a lot of wrong things he said that's why I'm here he said but I've repented for the wrong things that I did but I cannot repent for something that I did not do so I believe he's an innocent man and just as Reverend Jackson said earlier to all my Christian friends who are happy that Stan is gone because he did some bad things. But yet you pick up your Bible and you read the writings of Paul and you quote them quite well. But Paul was a persecutor of Christians until he had that road to Damascus experience and then he became the greatest disciple of Jesus Christ. In the Islamic tradition or history, Khalid bin Walid was the sword that killed many Muslims. But when he became converted, they didn't charge him with the killing of those Muslims. They died that he might live to become the sword of God. Stan has paid a price, dear brothers, here and on the outside for your redemption. And now you must avail yourself of Stan Tookie Williams' example and life. I close with these words. Prophet Muhammad said he saw the sun rising from the west in the latter day. Now this is the far western shore of the west. There is no city in America more plagued with gang violence than Los Angeles. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Los Angeles on the redemptive spirit and life of Stan Tookie Williams decided today not tomorrow, don't wait till tomorrow, right now that the blood shedding must cease. Wait, wait, wait now. These young soldiers, you are natural leaders of your people all over America. Suppose in Los Angeles you put the guns down. Suppose in Los Angeles you let the light of truth and peace and joy and justice and hope rise among the black and the brown and the poor. 
then the light from the west will start shining back toward the east and before you know it in Chicago in Cary, Indiana, in Detroit, in Newark, New Jersey, in New York, they'll say, we got the light from the West. Who is Stan? Stan Tukey Williams is the patron saint of all those struggling in gang life. And if we lift him up, lift him up, then his wisdom, his spirit, his words will draw these young people out of where they are to where he is. And then, as my, this, uh, Jagger, Jagger? J yes, Jagger, you, you, you said free at last. When you met him, he was already free. He wasn't waiting for death to free him. He was already freed from the demons within himself. So when you saw him, you saw a man that was free at last. Why don't we become free and become friends and brothers? So when we leave this place today, let no one break the peace. And let us go from this place when the benediction is said, determined that Stan Tookie Williams lives and his spirit lives in me. Thank you for listening and may God bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.